Hi everyone. Um, okay, welcome to Hangover slot number two. I hope you're not feeling too hungover this morning. Um, my name is Oliver Ash. You can find me on Twitter at this username. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about how I built an offline page for theguardian.com. Um, I work at The Guardian. Previously, I worked on the content management system, which is a web application you can see here. Um, this is called Composer. Um, if you want to hear more about that, you can uh, come talk to me later. But essentially, this is the tool that all the journalists use to publish content uh, to the web and also print. And now um, I work on the website. Um, so if you haven't been to theguardian.com, this is what it looks like. I'm going to begin by uh, comparing web and native and how these two different platforms um, compare when it comes to performance. In a native app, when you, open, when you open it, it will download some content and cache it. So the next time you open it and you're offline, well, you just see the stale content. This is a Guardian app. I'm offline, but I can still see the home page. I can actually navigate into content, and I can still read it. The same thing. If the server is down, um, I'll see the stale content. If I have a poor connection, then I'll see the stale content whilst we try to get the new content. Um, that might take a long time, but at least I'm seeing something in the meantime. And if I have a good connection, then I'll briefly see the stale content, and then I'll see the new content once it arrives. We all know this because we all use native apps every day. But on the web, well, if you're offline, you don't really get anything. If I try to go to theguardian.com and I'm offline, I just get this Chrome uh, offline page. Little known fact, there is a game you can play if you tap on the dinosaur. It's quite fun. I'm not very good at it, though. Um, if the server's down again, I just get this page. It's not very useful. Um, if I have a poor connection, then you're going to be, if you try to load theguardian.com at any website, you're going to be staring at a white screen until the content arrives. And if you have a good connection, then finally we have the happy path. You, you see the new content. Um, and, and the offline page is actually becoming something of a symbol. Like This is an advertisement in the uh, cap underground station in the capital of Argentina. And you can see that the, the dinosaur that I just showed you on the offline page um, is actually used in an advertisement. So why, why don't we use that as an opportunity to uh, push our brand and to, to give the, the user something useful? So we can. We can do that. We can do better. Um, and as a start, at the Guardian.com, we built an offline page. So um, if I'm on a HTTPS page on the Guardian and I go offline, when I refresh that page, I'll see the offline page. And it has a crossword you can play. Um, but I'm not very good at crosswords, so have a go there. If you want to try it out, uh, we, are, we have limited it to the uh, slash info slash developer blog section, and that's because of browser bugs, which I will explain later. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down how we built it um, in four steps. Um, the first step is uh, introducing service workers. Um, I j before I go into that, though, I just want to emphasize that this is something that I was able to build in less than a day. I think um, mid-2015, Jake came into the Guardian office to talk about service workers. And I thought, OK, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to, to try and learn and build something. And I was able to build what you just saw in, a, in less than a day. I did have to do some polishing to get it into production, but that was no more than a few hours. So everything you see here, you can learn. You can, I, I want to inspire you to, to go ahead and play with these technologies yourself. So what is a service worker? Well, <laughs> I don't know if this needs an introduction, really. Um, but I'm going to do, do an introduction. But Chrome, Chrome Dev Summit last year, uh, I think someone counted how many times the word, the word service workers was used. Um, and they counted 66.5. I actually think that's probably a guess. And I think it was probably mentioned more than 100 times. But there we go. Um, and of course, if you, if you didn't know what service workers where then you probably discovered yesterday that actually it's just a cake and um, you can eat service workers. <laughs> so a service worker 
is a script that runs in the background, um, and it, it's useful for features that require no user interaction. So that might be uh, listening to a push event, and you might want to show, an, show a notification when you receive a push event. Um, or it might be intercepting and handling network requests, uh, which is something that we'll be using specifically for the offline page, as, w as I'll show you. And in the future, it will be used for other things, like uh, background sync, if you have some data that you want to update periodically, um, or alarms, if you want to show a reminder at a specific time to a user, um, and also maybe geofencing, so when you enter a geographical perimeter, you want to perform some action. Um, all of these things, the service worker is a, is a perfect place to, to, have, to have those features. Um, and it's also a progressive enhancement, because if you don't have service worker, then your, your website just works as it, as it was before. Um, two, two, two things to note, um, it's HTTPS only, and uh, it's supported uh, in Chrome, Opera, and Firefox at the moment, um, but maybe Safari next decade, we'll see. Uh, and for the observant among you, you may realize that actually the Guardian isn't on HTTPS. But we are migrating. Um, we're actually migrating uh, pay section by section. Um, these are the ones that you can go to today, and they are HTTPS. And if you go to any of these pages, you'll get our service worker. Um, and if you want to learn more about how the migration is going, come and talk to me afterwards. But I, th I think we've essentially ruled out as advertising as a problem. Um, so we've almost got the green light to go for the HTTPS. Um, so creating and registering a service worker, uh, just imagine we, we create a empty file called serviceworker.js. And on a HTML page, we're going to have a script that tells a browser we want to register it. We have a service worker registered now, but nothing is really happening. The request is just going straight from the page to the server and back. If, if you want to, to see your service worker, you can actually use the DevTools to see that. If you go into the resources panel and uh, open the service worker down the left hand side. Um, likewise, in Chrome, if you go to um, about debugging hash workers, um, you can see your service worker there as well. So we have, we, have a, we have a service worker, but it's not doing anything. What we need to do is we need to, we need to download some resources ahead of time um, to show to the user when they're offline. We want to prime the cache. Um, Service Worker has something called the install event, which is the perfect opportunity to do this. Um, so I don't have too much code today, uh, but this is just to, to show you how you prime the cache. Um, we, in the install event, we just run a function called update cache. Um, and that opens a new cache, and it adds three different assets to the cache. The offline page, which is the HTML, some CSS, which we need for the, for the offline page to work, and um, some JavaScript. Uh, and we also, we're going to version the cache, because as we see later, we want to, um, we want to know when the user has a, an old version, and then we want to update it. Um, but you'll see that later. And uh, in our case, uh, as you saw, the offline page has a, cr has a crossword. That's actually built as a, a React, a React application. And that's all contained within, within the JavaScript that we're caching here. So now we have a service worker and a cache, but we're not doing anything still. Um, you know, the offline page doesn't work yet. Requests are, ju are just going straight to the server and back. So the next thing we need to do is we need to handle requests um, with something called the fetch event. Um, the fetch event uh, lets you intercept requests and handle them programmatically. Um, so the default um, is just for the browser to, to make the request to the network. Um, and in the code here, which I've just added to the bottom of the code that you saw previously, um, I'm just going, do, doing what the browser would do anyway. So I'm not doing anything different here. Um, but what you could do is you could fetch from, you could fetch from the catch, cache instead, um, or you could construct a response programmatically. So now 
our service worker is actually doing something. The, the requests are actually going through the service worker um, to the server and back. But we still don't have the offline page working. Um, so let's move on. Uh, just to give you an idea of the flexibility you have in a service worker, it is very, very programmatic. So you can actually construct your own uh, response. As you can see here, I have a string of HTML. Um, and I could just uh, construct a response from that string and respond with that. And that, to the browser, is a perfectly valid response. So you have a lot of control. Um, So in order to, to use the fetch event to serve the offline page, um, I, need to, I need to break this down into two parts. Because we have, we have two different types of content. We have HTML, which is mutable. Um, so you know, the guardian.com is some HTML, and it changes every time someone adds new content to it. The offline page will also change um, every time we make a change to it, or um, you know, the crossword updates. Whereas we have. Uh, we have immutable assets like our CSS and JavaScript. Once we deploy those, they are on the internet forever. Um, and if you request that URL, um, it, will, it will always return the same content. So we have different cache strategies for these different, different types of requests. So, and we need to handle them separately. For HTML, um, when, when you're offline, and you make a request for some HTML, that's the time when we want to show the offline page. So what we'll do is, uh, what we want to do is we want to go to the network first, because if you are online, we don't want to show the offline page. Um, but if there is an error when we try to go to the, to the network, then we'll fall back to the cache. Um, and this is a pat pattern known as network first, then cache. This is the same in, uh, fetch event you, st you saw earlier. Um, I, the only change I've made here is I've guarded the uh, response. Um, I'm only handling HTML requests. And the way I do that is by looking at the request headers. Um, so the request accept header um, tells me whether or not the browser accepts HTML. And I'll only, I'll only handle the, the request if the browser does accept HTML. That's not useful in itself, but we will elaborate. So um, moving on, we, ha we have we we're doing the fetch to the network, and we want to fall back to the cache. Fetch returns a promise. So if you're offline, fetch will return, will, will return a rejected promise. So we catch that, that promise rejection. And we retrieve something from the cache, which is our offline page. And now, if you're offline, you get this beautiful offline page. But something's missing. Um, I hope you can notice we're, we're missing some uh, styling and some behavior. So we now need to, to handle asset requests. And as I said earlier, these are immutable. So what we, what we want to do, really, is we want to go to the cache straight away, because we know that they're going to be in there. Um, and this is how we do that. If it's not HTML, then we'll just look in the cache to see if there's a, a, an entry that matches the request that's coming through. But that's not going to work for things which aren't in the cache. So. Uh, we, need to, we need to take a different approach. Um, we want to go to the cache first. And if it's not in the cache, then we'll try the network. And this is good for um, any CSS or JavaScript, any assets that we don't have in the cache. Because remember, remember, we're only caching things which are needed for the offline page. And the way we do that is the same code we had before. And caches.match returns a promise. And we'll see if the value of that promise um, is uh, undefined or not. And if, if there is a value, then we'll, we'll just use that. Otherwise, we'll go to the network using the fetch function. The final part to talk about is um, updating the crossword. So we publish new crosswords every day. Um, we have an avid uh, user base. And it would be great if the offline page contained the latest crossword. And how, how would you do this? Um, 
Well, the way we're currently doing it uh, is in the global scope of our service worker, um, we're, we're seeing if the cache is updated or not. And we, we, know, we, we know that by looking at the cache name that we, we defined earlier. As I said earlier, we, we version the cache. So if there isn't a version that matches today's date, then uh, we know it's not up, up to date. And if it's not up to date, then we'll run the same function that we ran in the install event, the update cache function. And then once that finishes, we can safely delete the old caches. In the future, um, we might want to use the background sync API for this um, instead. It's kind of it's a bit of a hack doing it, doing it here. And actually, the reason this works is because the browser closes the service worker um, to save on memory, and then it will boot it up again when you visit that page again. Um, so this code in the global scope actually gets a, gets a chance to run quite frequently. So there we go. We have an offline page. Um, everything works. Next, I want to talk about what we might use Service Worker um, for in the future on theguardian.com. Um, the offline page right now is a little bit insignificant because of our HTTPS migration um, is still ongoing and also browser support. Um, but it will increase in significance. You can imagine uh, a year from now when browser support is really good and um, we're on HTTPS, loads of people will see the offline page. So we would like to extend it, maybe uh, do what native apps do, show the stale content, or download content ahead of time and show them, show the user personalized content for them um, because we know what you've been reading recently. And uh, we also have a feature called Save for Later. We could use that um, as a, an action that states, I want to read this offline. And we could also go fully offline first. And Offline first, what does that mean? It means um, wh when I request the HTML, uh, I get a response instantly with just a shell of the page. Um, and that's coming from the cache um, via the service worker. That uh, improves the experience quite significantly for users with poor connections. As we saw earlier, uh, when we compared native and web, if you, if you have a poor connection and you open a website, you're just going to be staring at a white screen. So Service Workers allows you to, to avoid that situation and, and give a much better experience. Um, and yeah, we, we could show stale content whilst fetching new, new, uh, new content as well. So just to, I created a very hacky demo to demonstrate what I meant by that. This is kind of how um, many content websites work today. You tap on a link and then nothing happens for five, 10 seconds, depending on your network connection. And then finally, the new content downloads and it flashes and it appears on screen. But you're not really giving the user any feedback. Um, would, it would be much better if when I tap on that link, um, I get feedback straight away to say, OK, something is happening, something is loading. And then when the new content arrives, um, it just appears. And that is what we mean by shell architecture. I also want to mention some problems and caveats that I had when I was working on this. Um, mentioned earlier that there were browser bugs. Um, there's a weird bug in Chrome uh, where any redirect from HTTP to HTTPS would result in a, in a view of the offline page, even if you weren't offline. Um, and we also had a weird bug in Firefox where uh, cookies were dropped, um, which meant that Odd, there, there was odd behavior like users on uh, HTTPS sections couldn't use com commenting for some reason. Um, but we worked around those and they weren't, they weren't too severe um, and it's, it's been good to push uh, and identify those, those bugs. Um, I think they've all been fixed now. Um, and another problem we had was uh, inter interleaving of versions in the CDN cache. And I want to explain what I mean by that because I think other people might have this problem when they, when they try to, to cache things in the service worker. So we have a service worker, and that caches, um, I've simplified the example here, that just caches two things. It caches the offline page, which is some HTML, and it caches some CSS. And that offline page, when you try to run it, it will try to load that CSS. 
And if, if we looked at how things were cached in our CDN, um, the, the, when, when you request the service worker for the first time, okay, the, the CDN is going to cache that. We say it's going to cache it for 60 seconds. When you request the offline page for the first time, the CDN will cache that as well for 60 seconds. Um, and the same with the CSS, but because the CSS is an immutable thing, we can cache that for much longer. But at some point in time, we do a deploy, and um, someone changes the service worker. And when, you, when someone makes a request for that, the CDM will, will cache the new version if the old version has fallen out of the cache. And that leads to a situation like this, where you have the new version of the service worker, which is telling the browser to cache the old, the old version of the offline page, because the CDN still has that version, um, and the new version of the CSS. And of course, when you try to run the offline page because you're getting the old version, uh, the CSS just won't work, because it will be trying to load the, the version 1 instead of version 2. It's a, a difficult situation, um, and we, we could have fixed it. Uh, one way we could have fixed it is by naming, um, versioning the service worker and the offline page. Um, but the way, way we actually fixed it was using uh, something, I guess you would call a cache manifest. Um, so this is just some JSON that has some HTML um, for the offline page and a list of assets to download. And because that cache manifest will, will be a single entry in the CDN cache, you can guarantee that there will be no interleaving of versions. Um, so there we go. Finally, uh, why, why, did I, why did I do this? Um, I mean, it's fun to, to experiment with new browser technology, of course. Um, but although there's insignificant usage due to HTTPS and browser support right now, I think it's good to plant the seeds. And a lot of people don't realize that the web can work offline. Um, so I think um, it's good to, to start demonstrating that. Um, and people will start to see the product um, as, as these uh, things do increase in support. And also, it's good to iron out browser bugs um, that pushes the web forward. Um, and I really like this quote by Nolan Lawson. Um, if we only use features that work in IE8, we're condemning ourselves to an IE8 world. So I think I, re I really would like to encourage everyone to like, try and use service workers uh, today, because you can start building really great things with them. So in conclusion, um, service workers allows us to progressively enhance the experience for users who are offline, um, but also users with poor connections. Um, and it's really, really easy to build an offline page. Um, and it's a really good place to start. So um, go ahead and have a go. Here is uh, some further reading. Um, I wrote a blog post about all of this, if you want to read that. Um, and there's also a great explainer on service workers on Alex Russell's GitHub. Um, and you can actually visit the Guardian service worker if you want to take a look at what code we have in there. I will admit it's not exactly the same as what you've seen here because I've had to work around browser bugs and things like that. Um, but that's life. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.